I'm involved in this project um, because I'd gone through a particular experience in my life um, a few years ago when I became Muslim there was another sister with me who had become Muslim as well and she was very happy and you know so proud that she'd become a Muslim and I'd seen her grow wearing a hijab, wearing the jilbab and she was very proud of it and then I saw her get married she looked very happy I got married and things seemed to be fine We're going out own separate ways and we still stayed in contact with each other and things were going on some things were, were going on behind closed doors um, which I didn't know about and it was only a, a couple of years down the line did I find out that she was going through some domestic violence at home and I didn't get involved with it at all but what happened was is that she couldn't take the violence anymore and she left the violent relationship asked for a divorce but she had nowhere to go and so she she went back to her mum's who was, who's a Christian and uh, she was a very devout Christian and she was in that sort of situation for an, a couple of years and it was wearing her down because living with her mum it meant that she had to be involved in, in certain things that she didn't want to be involved in and her iman went down and got worse and worse and her mum became more forceful in making her leave the faith to a point where she was having her hijab hidden from her her prayer mat taken away her Islamic books, her tapes were taken away and she wasn't allowed to see her friends and so forth she came to a point where she realized that her iman was so low that she needed to find some way out of it but she, because she was a she was a single sister there's nothing out there for her to go to she couldn't leave um, her mom's house or, or enter into a refuge she had no money at all and she couldn't get the benefits either so the very little money that she did have, she, she, she left her mum's house and uh, she hired a car and she tried to go from door to door to all her friends. And she came to my house and she was telling me all this about her mum and what's happening. And I could see how low her iman was and I said that you have to get out of this situation and she says I know I have to but I've got no money I can't go off and rent my own accommodation I can't do anything and I didn't do anything I turned a blind eye to it all I gave her was some food from lunch and a few hours with her and I turned a blind eye to what was happening her state got worse and uh, she had to go into she had to go into um, um, she had to be sectioned and uh, um, she felt there was no way out and she called out to her family her and her sisters and even her ex-husband to get her out of the situation that she was in with her in her mom's house and we, everyone turned a blind eye to her 
to the point that she was in despair and she couldn't take any more and she took her life away. And I'm wrapped in guilt because I did not love for my sister what I love for myself. I did not give her the financial support, the emotional support, the place to stay, nothing. And now she's placed to rest in a Christian graveyard. And I did nothing. And from that day, I vowed that I will not do that again. Turn a blind eye. And for that reason, I want everyone to know that the National Zakat Foundation has to happen. Because in reality, so much things happen in the community and we'd all turn a blind eye to it. For a long time I did not have the answer of what to do, but now the answer has come by the grace of Allah, and it's up to us to take it with both our hands and run with it and make this project happen. So I urge you brothers and sisters to make it into a reality Donate your time, your money, your effort, your du'as, that this project does really happen.